Great to see everybody here this Easter morning. Happy Easter, happy Resurrection Sunday to you. Uh, is, there, is there any better place to be than the house of the Lord on an Easter Sunday morning? So thank you so much for being here. Whether you're a regular attender here or uh, this is your first time or the first time in a long time, we welcome you here and we thank you so much for being here. I feel like God really has a special word for us this morning and uh, I just like to say at the beginning of, a, of, of most of my messages just that that we don't care around here how you're dressed. We don't care how young or old you are. We don't, it doesn't matter how many tattoos you have or don't have. It doesn't matter how, what color your hair is or, or, or whatever. Or, or it doesn't even matter uh, what candidate you voted for in the last election. We're, we're, we're a church full of imperfect people with every kind of story imaginable, and we're simply here to grow in our relationship with God, to study the Bible uh, as, as God is revealed through the Holy Scriptures, to grow in faith, to grow in relationship with each other, and we're just simply glad that you're here. So thank you so much for coming, and, uh, and let's say a prayer and uh, just ask the Lord to help us to, to understand uh, as we dive into the Word this morning. So Father God... We thank you again for allowing us to gather here, and we pray, Lord, that by the power of your Holy Spirit, you would illuminate your word to our lives. Lord, help us to understand the truth of your scriptures. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. So I want to dive in this morning and just talk to you about about Easter, about the resurrection of Jesus, and I want to ask two simple questions about it. Number one, what does it mean? And number two, why does it matter? Okay, I'm the kind of person, you, you tell me to do something or you tell me about something, I want to know what it means. I want some understanding about it. And I want to know what difference does it make. Okay, And so a lot of people say, I believe in the resurrection. A lot of people will go to church on Sunday, on Easter Sunday, and, and they say, I, b- I believe in the resurrection, but I just don't really understand it very well. I don't understand exactly what it means. I, I read a uh, poll this week, and it said 84% of people who never go to church believe that Jesus rose from the dead. They believe that Jesus rose from the dead. I mean, it's a historical fact. If you think about it, this event did not happen in secret. The whole city of Jerusalem, the whole Roman Empire uh, knew about the resurrection of Jesus. I mean, it was really big news back in the day. If, if, if CNN or Fox News or whatever news station was, what you like is, was there, um, they would have been covering this event live. I mean, it was a big Deal. And there were at least 15 historical references to Jesus meeting with people, touching people, speaking with people after he had been crucified, after he had been resurrected back to life. One time he even cooked breakfast for his friends. One time uh, he talked to over 500 people after he had risen from the dead. The point is, a lot of people saw him. There were a lot of eyewitnesses and a lot of uh, historical uh, facts that confirmed that the resurrection of Jesus actually happened. It was an absolute, a for sure historical fact. And today, over 2.3 billion people around the world call themselves Christians and actually believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But the question still remains, and this is what I want us to think about for the next few moments, is this. What does his resurrection actually mean? What does his resurrection mean? And, and if you're taking notes with me, just go ahead and grab that paper and a pen. I like to teach, so I like for people to take notes from time to time. So write this down if you're taking notes with me. The resurrection means that Jesus is who he claimed to be. Think think about it with me. If you read the scriptures, you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus made some some pretty outlandish, outrageous, and some people would call them ridiculous claims about himself, about who he was, about his own identity, whether it was indirectly or directly from himself. He made some claims. It was like he said, 
I am the son of God. I am the son of man. I am the giver of eternal life. I am the forgiver of sins. I am the great I am. Jesus actually said that. He said, I am the giver of the living water. I am the light of the world. I am the future judge. I am the lamb of God. I am the baptizer in the Holy Spirit. I am the door of salvation. I am the savior. I am the Messiah. Jesus made some claims about who he was who his identity, what his identity was, and of course, on Easter, we want to remember this uh, from John chapter 11, where Jesus says, I am the resurrection. He didn't say he, he does the resurrection, he says, I am the resurrection and the life. He, the one who believes in me, guess what? He will live even though they die. Jesus said, I am. The resurrection. He claimed to be all these things, but what does the resurrection mean? The resurrection backs up what Jesus claimed to be. I want you to think about that this morning because if there was no resurrection, Jesus would simply be known as one of the biggest liars in history. His resurrection validated everything that he ever said about himself. This is what the resurrection means. This is why it's so powerful. And and probably one of Jesus' greatest claims is found in John chapter 14. Look up, up on the screen with me. Jesus said, I am the way. Everybody say the way. I am the truth. Say the truth. And I am the life. Say the life. And Jesus said, no one comes to the Father God, no one comes to the Father except through me. So this is a strong claim. This is one of the claims that got him in a lot of trouble. Jesus actually said, I am the way. He didn't say, I am one way, or I am a good way, or I am one of many ways to God. Uh, Jesus said, I am the way. That means any other way that you hear that you can get to God is not true. Amen? The resurrection validated this claim. The resurrection backs up. It it makes it true. It It says, this is the truth. The resurrection, if it never happened, you could forget everything that Jesus ever said. But because the resurrection did happen, because it was a historical fact, because it happened at a certain point in history, it backs up everything that Jesus said about himself. Second thing I want you to write down is this. The resurrection means that Jesus, excuse me, Jesus has the power and the authority he claimed to have. Jesus has the power and authority he claimed to have. In Matthew chapter 28, Jesus says this, all authority, all power of absolute rule in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Thank you, buddy. No force could keep Jesus in that tomb. Think about that. No force could keep Jesus in that tomb. The Romans killed him, put him in the tomb, put a big stone in front, sealed it with a Roman seal, and posted a 24-hour guard around that tomb. They were only trying to prevent the inevitable because Jesus said, they can't stop me. I can give my life away, and I can take it up again. Look at this scripture in John 10. Jesus said these words, I surrender my own life, and no one has the power to take my life from me. I have have the authority to lay it down and the power to take it up again. This is the destiny my Father has set before me. So what does the resurrection mean? The resurrection means that Jesus is who he claimed to be and that Jesus does have all power and all authority. Number three, write this down, the the resurrection means that Jesus did what he promised to do. How many of you know that Jesus always does, he always fulfills, he always comes through with the things that he says he is going to do? Several times in the Gospels, Jesus explained to his disciples what was coming. 
He explained the future suffering. He explained that he would be mocked and beaten, that he would die at the hands of the Roman soldiers. But he also explained that he would be resurrected on the third day. He gave them four warnings so that they would know when these things happen, not to be freaked out about it. In, in Mark 10, we see this. It says, we're, Jesus said, we are going up to Jerusalem, guys. And the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priest and to the teachers of the law. They will condemn him to death and will hand him over to the Gentiles, who will mock him and spit on him, flog him and kill him. And three days later, he will rise. What was Jesus doing? He was telling them what was about to happen. Because the cross and everything associated with Jesus' suffering, his passion, that holy week was no surprise to Jesus because it was all part of God's plan to provide salvation. And honestly, the resurrection should have been no surprise to his followers. Why? Because Jesus foretold them about it. But after the resurrection of Jesus um, in Matthew chapter 28, look at what happened. The angel said to the, to the women, do not be afraid, for I know who, that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen. This is what Easter is all about. But look at these next few words, just as he said. What does that mean? What does the resurrection mean? It means that Jesus will do what he says he will do. Jesus does what he promises. And when God makes a promise, my friends, I want you to hear this this morning. God is faithful to keep his promises. When he speaks a promise to your life, you can count on it. You can stand on it. You can know that it is not wishy-washy. You can know that it is not flimsy. No, when when Jesus says something, it is true, and you can trust him with what he says. Somebody say amen on this Easter morning. All right, so what what does the resurrection mean? It means that Jesus is who he says he is. Number one, he has the power and authority that he claimed to have, number two, and that Jesus keeps every promise that he makes. So the next question I just want us to think about for a minute is, so what? What? So what? So what does this have to do with me? So what? This is what the resurrection means. So what? This is what, what validates who he is, his identity, his faithfulness. So what? I'm a practical kind of guy, and I just want to know, like, if you're going to tell me something, if you're going to make an argument, I want to know, well, what difference does it make? What does it have to do with me in my daily life? You ever thought that? You ever asked that? Okay, I'm glad you did. Number one, what does it mean? The resurrection matters. The resurrection makes a difference because my past can be forgiven. Now think about that. My past can be forgiven. That's some of the best news that you can possibly hear is that Jesus can forgive us. He can forgive our sins because of the blood that he shed on the cross. We can come to him and know that because we have confessed Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we have asked him to forgive us of our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The resurrection matters because my past can be forgiven. A lot of times people feel that way about, about life. Like you ever started a project, but you got halfway done and realized you didn't, you didn't like the way it was going? So a lot of people feel that same way about how they live their lives. They, they get halfway through life or they get to some point in their life and they, there's this point where you just wish you could have a redo. You wish you could have a, st- a, st- a start over. We, we wish we hadn't have done things one way. We wish we wouldn't have said it that way. We wish we wouldn't have had the thoughts about this or that. I mean, we all have regrets. We all have guilt. We all have shame. I was talking to a pastor friend of mine, and sometimes as pastors, we get, we get every kind of story imaginable. And, and a pastor friend of mine shared this and asked me to join him in prayer together. But he received this note from from a friend of his, and it said this. I am 31 years old and divorced, 
I, I, I fought bitterly through the divorce, and I feel really badly. I have no hope for my future. Often I go home, and I, and I weep, I cry, but there's, there's no one there. No one seems to care. Nothing ever changes. I continue to fail and fail and fail in my life and in my relationships and in my job. And I'm stressed out emotionally, and I feel like I'm on the verge of a collapse. Something is very wrong, and I feel so hurt and bitter that I can barely react or relate to others anymore. I feel as though I'm going to have to sit, sit the rest of my life out in the penalty box. This is the way some, one, one guy uh, described what he was going through. And, and, but the tragedy is a lot of people think that way. And a lot of people are there. But man, a lot of people think that, that just because some things happened in the past and there, were, there may be some guilt, there may be some shame, that people can get stuck there. We don't want to get stuck there. We want to recognize that there is forgiveness in Jesus Christ. There is healing. Did you know that God can forgive you? But not only that, he can redeem your past and make it into a future that is more glorious than you could have ever imagined. And he can use some of those hurts, some of those, the, those, those things that were done to you or some of those things that you've done to other people. He can forgive it and redeem it and turn it around and use you to minister to somebody else who's going through the same kinds of problems. This is how great our God is. We don't want to get stuck in the past or stuck in our guilt and shame. We want to go to God and let him speak to us, speak that forgiving word and speak that, that redeeming word into our lives. Let's look at Colossians chapter 2, verses 13 and 14. <clears throat> These are some of my favorite verses. It says this. The Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Colossae and said this. When you were spiritually dead because of your sins. How many of you know that you're born spiritually dead? And, and sin does nothing except for separate you from God. Separates you from God. And it said, when you were spiritually dead because of your sins and because you were not free from the power of your sinful self. Look. God made you alive with Christ, and he forgave all our sins. Boy, I love this thought because there are things in our life that are dead. There is a spiritual life that we're missing because of sin. And because Jesus showed up and because God sent Jesus to die on the cross for our sin, we have been made alive in Christ and our sins have been forgiven. That scripture goes on to say, he canceled the debt. Everybody say, canceled the debt. He canceled that debt, which listed all the rules that we failed to follow. He took away that record with its rules, and he did what? He nailed it. He nailed it to the cross. And I want you to hear that this morning, maybe with fresh ears, because this is God's forgiveness program. This is God's pardon program. Jesus nailed it to the cross. Your guilt, your shame, your sin, he paid for all those things. And that, that means that you and I don't have to pay for those sins anymore. It was nailed to the cross so we can quit nailing ourselves to the cross. He wants to forgive our past. He wants to cancel every debt that we have, emotional debts, relational debts, every sin, all canceled. Maybe, maybe some of you remember um, that little red box called the Etch-a-Sketch things, okay? It's like you, you draw little pictures or a little maze or whatever you want to draw in that thing. You're, you guys remember that? Am I, am I, okay, a few of you do. But if you like mess up or do something wrong or the picture that you're drawing doesn't turn out the way you want it, what do you do? You, fl you flip it and you shake it and it erases and it gives you a fresh start. But here, this is the power of this verse right here. This is the power of Jesus. This is the power of the cross of Jesus Christ in his blood. He can give you a clean slate. 
He can give you a brand new start. So what does the resurrection mean for us? It means that our past can be forgiven. Amen? Number two, the resurrection matters because our present problems can be overcome. Our present situation, whatever it may be, it can be managed. It can be handled. It can be overcome. And we can come out on the other side victorious. Everybody say victorious. I talk to a lot of people as a, as a pastor, and the number one thing I hear from, from people, it's, it's just a complaint that they, that they share with me, and they say, Pastor, my life is out of control. I feel powerless to change my situation. I feel powerless to break this addiction. I feel powerless to... to um, uh, to save a relationship. I feel powerless to get out of debt. I feel powerless to manage my life, my resources, my time, my schedule. But what we have to realize is this. We, we may fe- feel powerless in our, in our flesh, but what we have to remember is that we can tap in to the power of God through a relationship with him. And as we put our trust and our faith in God, guess what? The, pr- the power of the Holy Spirit indwells within us and can give us the power to overcome anything, any situation, any trouble, any problem that we may have because of the power of God. And we don't need to re- forget that fact. And so we look at these scriptures like in Ephesians chapter 1. It says this, the Apostle Paul said, God's power is very great for us who believe. Did you know that God's power is very great for you? It is very great for you. It is that same power as the great strength God used to raise Christ from the dead and put him at his right side in the heavenly world. It's that same power that enabled Jesus to raise from the dead will help you and I to rise above our problems. It's that same power that God used in the resurrection of Jesus over 2,000 years ago can be used in your life right now. What I want you to understand this morning is that Easter is is not just an event that we can attend and celebrate. No, Easter is something that you can experience in your life, those areas of your life that you may think are dead, your spiritual life, your your life in God, your your marriage, your family, your work life, uh, your relationships, those, some of those areas we think are dead and it's a deception because we need to remember the truth of Easter. Whatever we think is dead in our lives, God can bring it back to life. And two people said amen to that. (laughs) Hallelujah. We don't know what our future holds. You don't know what next month, next year, next week holds. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know. But it doesn't matter because if things may be out of our control, but they're never out of God's control. and And God will give me the power to see me through whatever comes. So the resurrection is not only about my past and forgiveness of that, but it's also about providing a power for me to live victoriously in an, in a, as an overcomer in my today. You look at Romans chapter 8, verse 11. This is one of my favorite verses uh, to share around Easter time, and it's this. Paul said, and if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit, excuse me, who lives in you. And so God says to us, some of us may have just crawled into church this morning. We've had a rough day. We've, We've had a rough week. We've had a rough month. We've had a rough year. And some of us would even say, hey, my whole life has been rough. But God wants to say this to you this morning. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't lose heart. You are loved, my friends, 
my brothers, my sisters, you are loved, you are valued, and God wants to fill you with his holy power to help you get through your todays. You see, nothing is too hard for our God. Absolutely nothing is too hard for him. There's no promise too hard for God to keep. There's no prayer too hard for him to answer. There is no problem too hard for God to solve. And listen, somebody needs to know this this morning. There is no person too hard for God to save. Whatever our situation is today, my friends, you can rely on God's power. If you will turn to him and you will call upon his holy name and you will trust him in your life, you will know and you will discover that there is nothing too difficult for God, and you will experience it in your own life. And don't just take it from a preacher preaching to you on Sunday morning. You can know it. You can experience it in your own life. So what does the resurrection matter? It matters because it deals with my past. I can be forgiven. I can be redeemed. And it also matters because it affects my present. God can give me the power of the Holy Spirit for me to lean on in in times where my life seems out of control. It's not out of control for God. And thirdly, the resurrection matters because my future can be secure. I might say amen to that. My future can be secure. One of, the, one of the universal problems that we all have as human beings is this. We're all going to die one day. Unless Jesus returns and catches us away, we are all going to die one day. Now, aren't you glad you came to church on Easter Sunday and be encouraged by that word? Okay? But let's face it. We're all going to die one day. We're, and so only a fool, listen, only a fool would go through life unprepared for what they know is going to happen one day. It doesn't make sense. But sometimes what we do, we get so busy in the here and now. We get so busy with our work, with our school, with our money, with our career, with this or that. We get so busy and we fail to take the time to stop and to think about our eternity, to think about our relationship with God. It says in John chapter 17, verse 3, and this is the way to have eternal life, to know you, the only true God in Jesus Christ, the one you sent to the earth. Did you catch that? It's very clear in this scripture. How do you have eternal life? Is it by going to church? No. Nope. Is it by doing all the right things? Is it by checking all your religious to-do boxes? Is it by giving in the offering? Is it by joining a life group? Is it by going through the growth track? No, it's none of that. No, eternal life is how? To know God. To know him. Somebody asked me one time, uh, what does it mean to know God rather than just to know about him? The fundamental difference I I tell people is this. Knowing God is about a personal relationship with him. It's about knowing who he is. It's about reading in his word who who he is. And it's about sharing life together. It's not about a religion. It's not about going to church. It's not about doing this or that. No, it's about knowing God. This is eternal life. And to know Jesus Christ, the one whom he sent. It's about a relationship. God is a person. You can know about him, but you really don't know him until you have a personal relationship with him. For instance, I can know all about Justin Bieber, for example. <clears throat> But I wouldn't say that I know him. (laughs) To know him means what? I've met him. We've shared together. Okay, this is a bad example. (laughs) But the staggering promise of the Bible is this. We can know God. 
we can know him personally. We can know him face to face. And he wants us to know him. And he wants us to share in his eternal life. So I want to ask you a few questions. I'm going to invite the worship team to come back up. We're going to have a time of prayer together. But I want to ask you this question. Would you like your past to be forgiven? Would you like God to redeem your your world and use it for his glory? Well, he can. Would you turn to him? Would you call upon his holy name? This is what Easter is all about. Second question I want you to think about this morning is this. Would you like to experience a new and dynamic power? This is the power of the Holy Spirit to empower you to be an overcomer in your present. To give you the power, not in yourself, but in Him. When you are weak, He is strong. When you have no power, you can turn to Him who is your power and who is your strength. You can know the power of the Holy Spirit in a very real way today. This is what Easter is all about. And number three question I want you to consider is, would you like to have your future secured? Would you like to know that you are saved, that you are rescued, that you are born again, that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, and that when you pass away or when Jesus comes, you're going to have eternal life with him? You can know that. And you know it by having a relationship, by knowing God and Jesus Christ, the one he sent. This is what Easter is all about. And this is how Easter can make a difference in you. So we talked about what is Easter, what does the resurrection mean? And we've talked about what it means for me, what difference does it make I want you to know today loud and clear Jesus can transform any life Jesus can make a difference in any single person who comes to him with a humble and a believing heart I want to share with you a testimony written by a member of our church named Amanda she said this I met Jesus and accepted him into my heart at seven years old. I've kind of known him nearly all my life, but the problem was I stopped listening to him and I stopped trying to please him. I lost faith. I've had enormous adversity throughout my life and starting at a young age. My dad left us right away. I faced abuse of all kinds from different family members. As a young teen, I became involved in a very abusive relationship with an older man. I started smoking, I started drinking, I started doing drugs, I started running away. And as a young adult, I met my husband who was agnostic. We married, had children right away. I never stopped believing in Jesus, but you wouldn't know it by my lifestyle. I was an alcoholic. I would binge drink sometimes for days and then be so depressed I'd stay in bed for days and wish for death. My marriage was also suffering. I would get the family to church a few times a year but continued my worldly way of living. I would try to pray but I felt as though God had given up on me. I felt hopeless for my husband to ever accept Christ. I felt like I failed God. I failed myself. I failed my family. And I had a lot of bad spirits in my house. And I would try to cast them out, but nothing seemed to work. I was being terrorized and living in constant fear. And one day, about three months ago, I had a very intense spiritual experience. I'd woken up many times throughout the night once. My son was sleep-talking and said, 
he would pull my eye out and chop it off. Another time I felt like I was falling. I was falling, I was falling like in an elevator shaft. And when suddenly I I would stop falling and I would sit up straight in my bed and, and I felt something evil pass through me. It was so intense and it was like a scary movie. The next day my son, crying, told me he had a bad dream. And in his dream there was a demon sitting next to him. And so he came into the living room to tell me and his dad about it. And he saw that we were both blind. She said, we were blind. We could not see what was really happening here. And she said, that was it for me. I never knew what it meant to fully surrender, but at that very moment, that's what I did. Listen to these words. I cried out to the Lord, and I prayed. How many of you know that's a turning point? I cried out to the Lord, and I prayed. Somebody here needs to hear that this morning because your life is filled with with bad stuff too. And hey, we all go through stuff and we all have issues, but you need to hear this testimony because Jesus Christ can transform any single life. But she says, I, I cried out to the Lord and I prayed. Then she said, I Googled a church near me. Thank God for Google, right? She Googled the church near me and she found the Springs Church. She came to church the very next day and we were doing a baptism Sunday and her son got baptized that Sunday. She says, I was filled with the Holy Spirit and I could not stop crying the whole service. She said, Jesus and I got back together. She said, since then, my life has been so different. I see everything from a new perspective. All I want to do now is try to please my God and be more like Jesus. She said, I have peace. And I have joy that I have long forgotten about. And my husband is now coming to the Lord. And she said, I am no longer terrorized by evil. It stopped instantly. She said, I suffered for a great amount of years simply because I refused the Lord. But he patiently waited for me. He looked for me and he looked out for me even though I wouldn't acknowledge him he saved my life and he saved my family and I never want to go back to that darkness and this is my story this is an email that I got a couple weeks ago and Amanda's right here on the front row <clears throat> And she can testify to every one of us that Jesus Christ can still change lives. And the resurrection of Jesus and what we celebrate at Easter is not just a religious thing. No, it's a very real thing. And it can impact our past. It can transform our present. And it can change the way that we experience our future. you have your connection card, I want you to grab that now. We're going to enter into a time of prayer, and I just want to ask you about where you're at on your spiritual journey. So grab that connection card, look on the back, grab a pen, I always like to do this on Easter because everybody's here. And it's a good time for us to think about where we are spiritually, where we are in our own spiritual journey. So I want you to take a minute right now and look at that A, look at that B, the C, the D. The A, 
I want you to circle the A if you're already in a relationship with Jesus Christ. If you already know God, if you already have a personal relationship with him, I just want you to circle A, and we praise God for that. And if you're here today and you would say, Pastor, I want to begin. I want to just begin. I want to start a real relationship with Jesus Christ. If that's you today, I want you to circle B. If you're here today and you would just like to consider a little, a little bit more first, maybe you've got some questions, maybe you've got some concerns, maybe you want to talk to a pastor and work some things out, but you need a little time to consider it more first. I want you to circle C. And by the way, if you're here today and, you're, and, you're, and that's you, I'm thrilled that you're here. And I want you to know that you're welcome here with your doubts, with your questions, with your concerns. But don't leave them. Don't get stuck there. Pray about them. Talk to people about them. We want to help you move forward from there. And then D, I don't ever intend on making that decision. I want you to be like boldly, raw, honest and if that's you and you don't ever intend on making that decision, I just want you to be bold enough to circle that letter right there. Why? Because we would love to pray for you. <laughs> because let me tell you, in the past, some, there have been some people who have circled that D who are now some of the best members of, of the church because they thought they were hopeless. And they thought they were too bad. And they thought they were too far gone. But nobody's too far gone for Jesus. So we will pray for you. So I want everybody just in this moment, just think about just to yourself where you're at on your spiritual journey. And I want you to circle one of those letters. You circled B. I want to invite you to pray this prayer after me. This is a prayer that's going to lead you into salvation. Remember, it's the beginning of your journey. So with every head bowed, every eye closed, I want you to all pray this prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father. Come on, say it like you mean it. Dear Heavenly Father, I repent for being master of my own life and living separate from you. I turn away from my sin and I turn towards you. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead. I receive you, Jesus, as my personal Lord and Savior. And now I welcome you, Holy Spirit, into my life to rescue me, to empower me, and to restore me to intimacy with my Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name I pray, amen. Now listen, before we give God praise, I want to encourage you, if you prayed that prayer with me from your heart, from the sincerity of your heart, I want to encourage you, let us know on that connection card. I want you to sign up to be baptized. Uh, I want you to make church attendance a priority. I want you to get involved, go through the growth track, go through, get, get in a life group, because this is how you live out your faith. So this is the beginning, right? You prayed that prayer, it's the beginning, it's not the end. There you need to be discipled, you need to grow, you need to know what the Bible teaches. And you can't do that if you just pray it and forget it. Make church attendance a priority, get plugged in, get involved.